Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here, and um, today in class we did a thinking routine on the board um, that modeled something very similar to what I'm getting ready to go over right now. Um, so when we think about exponential functions, I want us to think about them being different from linear and that linear is a constant rate of change, which is why the graph is a line. Like it's really constant. Actually, in my lifetime, I'd like to think that things are pretty constant, but your lifetime, things are growing really, really fast. And actually, we can say they're growing maybe like by a percentage. So let's look at this example. Suppose you start making a job making $40,000 a year and you receive a 4% a raise at the end of each year. So, and I ask you, how much would you be making after one year? I'm thinking that most of you would probably um, take 40,000 and you'd multiply it by 4% or 0 0.04. You'd get 1,600 and then you'd take that 40,000 that you started with, you'd add 1,600, and you'd get 4,100. Great, I'm, my second year I'm gonna be making uh, 41,600. Not a huge increase though, right? Uh, that's about standard, three to 4%, sometimes 5%. All right, if I asked you how much you'll be making two years on the job, well, then you'd take 41,600, right? And you'd multiply it by 4%, and you would get, I calculated this already, it was 1664. And then you'd add it. So, um, what about if I, you know, asked you how much you're gonna be making after 10 years? You'd actually have to do this every single time, right? And you really don't wanna have to keep adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying. Um, we've talked about this a little bit this year. So, I mean, this could actually represent an exponential function, but I want you to notice that if I took 0 0.04 and I raised it to the 10 power, what I would be adding would just be the 4%. What's a way for me to capture the 40,000 I originally started with? Well, if we think about it, if I had taken that original 40,000 and I had multiplied it by 1.04, what that would have done, if you think about the distributive property, what that really means is 40,000 times one plus 0 0.04. So basically, mathematically, it took 40,000 times one, which gave me this, 40,000 times 0 0.04, which gave me this, and so my final answer, it would be a direct equation to my final answer. I wouldn't have to do those two steps. We can use that same idea with 10 years on the job. If I took that original 40,000, I multiplied it by 1.04 um, and raised it to the 10 power, that would actually give me what I'd be making after 10 years on the job. But it has to include the one. Otherwise, it's only giving me the interest or the, the raise. All right, so our general equation for n years on the job would be 40,000 times 1.04, and if n is years, to the n power. So I might use a variable or a function notation a of t, the amount, I'm sorry, a of n, um, the amount at n, n years. Um, all right, so we're gonna look at these models that we use for real life examples of exponential functions. So exponential uh, word problems, so you have to really think when a value is increased or decreased by a percentage, okay, the function's gonna be exponential. And when we think about it, you know, we had like those functions y equals two to the x, the percentage here was actually 100% because I'm doubling every time, like multiplying by two every time. But when we're working with just basic percentages, the formula looks very similar. We're gonna use a of t, the amount at t time of a sub zero, which is our initial amount. Sometimes um, when we're talking about like financial amounts, we might call it the principal the principal amount. We might call it the starting amount, right? Basically everything the original that you started with. 
There's that one. So you're going to do one plus or minus because exponential we know can decay. So it could go down or could decrease. So it would be one plus or minus r. r is the rate. And we always want to write it as a decimal, written as a decimal. And then t is time. Now I want you to really think about this. A, uh, y equals a b to the x power. This is my b value, right? Um, typically it's a number. So if it was 1 plus 1, it'd be 2. So that would be doubling 100%. Um, 1 plus 2 would give me 3. That would be tripling. So you can kind of see how these relate and why they're, they're equivalent expressions, okay, or equivalent uh, equations. All right. There's an alternate form too. And I really want us to think about these alternate forms because exponential functions, especially in physics, you're gonna be like working with all these different functions. They're really the same, but based on the information you're given, you might look at it different. So an alternate form I see a lot is a sub zero times b to the t over k. So more like the function we're used to for the graph. So a of t, amount at t time, okay? Um, a sub zero still is your initial amount. Let me switch to a different color. Initial amount. Um, T is time. And K really becomes the amount of time, the amount of time it takes for a sub zero, so the initial amount to be multiplied by b. Okay, and um, you know, that's actually gonna be really important as we do these problems, right? And I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more about b. So when we're talking about the value of b, I really think like to think about it two different ways. I like to think about it um, as a rate, as a percentage, and as um, like, you know, it's like the value of what it's doing, whether it's tripling or doubling, okay? Functions that are exponential also could deal with half-life, which might be something that you talk about in your chemistry class. Um, half-life is when we take a quantity, typically a chemical or a, um, you know, maybe like cells that were growing or decaying um, and Look, you can see how similar these all these formulas are. They're all really, really similar because they're equivalent. They're just written kind of differently. So half-life would be n of t with the quantity remaining, n sub zero is the initial quantity, t is the elapsed time. Oh, I didn't put that here, right? Oh, I did, yeah. And t, t uh, sub one-half is just the half-life of the substance. So if the half-life's five years, then t one-half would be five. Um, and we're going to look at each example as we move on um, into this section. So this is kind of a video about the formulas. So you're going to press pause, make sure you've got all of your notes. And I really want you to take a look carefully at the formulas and how they kind of work with y equals a b to the x, how they relate to each other. Kind of pay attention, maybe put them in colors, which ones stand out to you, what values aren't changing. Um, but again, the most important thing is we use these formulas when something's going up or down by a percentage of some sort, okay? All right, hopefully that was helpful. Have a great day.